knife down now. Put the knife down! Dealing with angry patients can be tough. Let's break it down. Somebody in there right now? Where is he? He just kicked, he just kicked the window off. We got anybody out? The driver just got here. I just got here. All right. Driver of the vehicle is up here. Driver of that vehicle? He's on the left side of that little boy. Laying okay. it down. Yeah, kind, right, of start, right. kind of start to see it. Right. Hey, we got somebody coming for you. How many people are in this vehicle? Where are you hurt? Where's your dad? I don't look at you. This, 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 this up here? Yeah. Okay, how many people? How many people were in this vehicle? Four in this vehicle. All right. You, you, your dad. And where, where's the fourth? Is that, is that your little brother right there? Okay. All right, so this video comes from the Raleigh Police Department. This actually happened pretty recently at the time of making this video. I think this whole incident happened three or four weeks ago. And essentially, my understanding of what happened is there was some sort of accident. Obviously, a vehicle rolled over and there's injured people. One person seemed as though they were intoxicated or confused or something like that. And police and fire were called and the officers here ended up having to shoot someone, unfortunately. Now, in this particular instance, I think this cop is doing an awesome job doing an initial scene size up. But if you notice, he asks a really important question. This is something that if you are an EMS provider, you should be asking anytime you show up on a car accident or a rollover. He's asking how many people are in this vehicle. That's an important question to ask because there's countless times of vehicles rolling over and people getting thrown from vehicles 30, 40, 50, 60 feet. And sometimes they don't get found until much later or maybe even the next day. I've heard some really bad stories about things like that. You need to know how many people were in the vehicle, how many victims you're dealing with, but it's also important to know how severe the injuries are of the different people that, uh, were, in the, that were involved in the accident. Looks like this kid has having some back pain. Uh, the dad, who we'll see here shortly, is walking around talking. The mom seems like she's doing okay. There's a little kid as well. I'm not sure exactly what the injuries were. But it's important to get a good size up whenever you do this to figure out where you should be allocating your resources. Hey, where are you hurt at? Where are you hurt at? You're back. Okay, how old are you? 20. 20. Okay, come, come, come to this side for me, okay? He's crying and toxic. How old are you? Hey! Okay, we're, we're getting cut. Yo venía manejando. Hey, mami, mami. Yo venía manejando tranquilo. Y él me venía sacando el dedo. Él me venía sacando el dedo. Okay, pero deje tranquilo. Deje tranquilo. Deje tranquilo. Hey, hey, we're going to figure it out. You need to sit down for me. All right, so that guy apparently was the father of the children and was involved in the accident. There's a lot of reasons people can be acting like this after an accident. Uh, a lot of the bystanders, as you hear here, are saying that this guy's drunk or he's intoxicated, whether it was alcohol or drugs or whether that's true or not, I have no idea. Sometimes head injuries can uh, cause people to act a little unusual, a little irate. Uh, medical issues, uh, diabetic issues can cause people to act unusual or out of character for themselves. If you've ever had to wrestle with a... Uh, chronically low diabetic, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but in this instance, this was the driver of the vehicle. He seems like he's okay health-wise walking around. He's walking, talking, and he obviously doesn't, sounds like he doesn't really speak English or understand English that well. It's awesome that this cop is actually able to speak a little bit of Spanish, and there are other bystanders on the scene that are able to help translate and speak to this guy in Spanish as well. Use that if you're ever on a scene. If you're ever on a scene and there's someone that is bilingual or use whatever resources you have, I think this cop did an awesome job doing that. All right, so now he's obviously showing that he's irate. Whatever, whatever his issue is, whatever his condition is, maybe he's just confused, maybe he's intoxicated, whatever. Fire and EMS hasn't shown up quite yet. 
but I would think that police would be relaying to you what's going on, that this guy is irate and that he's acting like this. And if you if they don't relay that to you ahead of time, you should start asking those questions when you get on scene. Anytime there's a person in any sort of situation, whether it be in a house or, or a public building or out on the side of the road like this, anybody that starts acting irate and unusual, you need to keep your eye on. Don't take your eye off this person. Obviously, there's going to be patients that you need to deal with and you need to you know treat and take care of. But don't lose sight of this person, especially if you're in a house. If that person and you're on scene with the police just dips back into a bedroom to go do whatever, make sure somebody goes with him. Make sure a cop keeps an eye on him, especially when you're acting like this. Emotions can get high and it can get really tense and you don't want to be in a situation where somebody goes back and, God forbid, gets some sort of weapon and comes back out and hurts people. He's highly intoxicated. He's drunk and high. I'm trying to figure out. We're working on it, okay? Hey. Listen, hey, we have, we have an ambulance coming. She got RFD pulling up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you guys actually saw it happen? No, I was telling the other, uh, telling the sergeant when I was coming, uh, when I was coming down, <laughs> I was coming down Jones South, oh. coming across Jones South, get on 40. Okay. Coming up this way, Capitol Boulevard, he passed me. I was <laughs> So at this point, you see both fire and EMS. I'm assuming this is the Raleigh Fire Department. I'm not sure how they do their EMS, if they're all one agency, if Raleigh does fire and EMS, or if they're separate agencies. But at this point, that father is back behind here. You'll see in a minute, it'll it'll become more clear who's who in this crowd over there. As far as I know, nobody's aware that this guy has a knife on him yet, which is why it's important whenever you show up on a scene like this, any scene, but especially where somebody's acting irate and especially some sort of uh, scene where it's very emotional it, it can be potentially tense like a car accident keep an eye on these people you always want to be looking around you'll see this guy will pull out a knife here shortly and he is literally standing right next to two or three firefighters could be a potentially very dangerous situation 65 68 he passed me with the, i mean like i was standing still and the okay. truck was sitting there doing this right here where he's overweight carrying all this marble and stuff or granite okay and then he almost hit the side of my truck. I bet he went two inches from me when he went by me. Scared the hell out of me. Okay. And then I, who was driving? I don't know who was driving, but when I come up and was trying to get the patients out of the car, out of the vehicle, the guy with the necklace and stuff was on behind the, the driver's side. He was on the driver's side. So everybody me. was already... Uh, he was not the one. He was not out. Uh, so the guy with the necklaces, he was... Hey, see? See? So as you can see, this guy has a knife in hand, um, and I don't know if you were able to see it. If you need to rewind it just a little bit, you can see him take it out and swing it. How close he swung it at anybody, I don't really know. If you're a first responder and you find yourself in a situation like this, you see three firefighters, one right next to him, one on the ground next to him taking care of a patient. Uh, this is a bad situation. This is not something you want to be in. You have essentially two options. Number one, get out of there, especially because there's police there. Get away from this person. This per person is going to start swinging a weapon wildly at people for no reason. He's obviously already acting erratically. You might want to get out of there. Number two, if you're in a situation where you can't get out of there, you got to get ready to fight. Uh, I highly recommend that uh, EMTs and paramedics and anybody who really who works in public safety at least learn the basics of how to defend yourself. And I don't mean from some silly self-defense guru on YouTube. But I mean actually go learn how to defend yourself because this happens far more often than you would probably realize. Maybe not this exact situation, but dangerous situations where you might find yourself trapped and not be able to get out of. But in this case, looks like they have plenty of room to get out of there. You'll see here shortly they do get out of there pretty quick. And we'll keep going. Come here. No. Put the knife down. Put it down. Put, put the knife down. Put the knife down now. Put the knife down. Primo. Primo. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Primo. 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 Hey. Primo. 
So a couple things, props to those firefighters for staying in there and trying to treat this kid. It's a little kid that's on the ground that they're treating right now, but this guy is belligerent. Uh, you can hear them speaking to him in both English and in Spanish. They have, it looks like their tasers are drawn. Um, and he's shaking his head saying no when they're telling him to drop the knife. He knows what he's doing at this point, it seems like, and he's getting closer and closer to the firefighters. Here's a lesson that people should know, the general public should know. If you're in a situation where medics or EMTs or firefighters are treating one of your family members and you're frustrated and you're irate, if you begin to do something where you're going to go after those first responders, medics, EMTs, whoever, they're getting out of there. Um, they're going to look out for themselves and they should look out for themselves and their safety above whatever else is going on. They are there to treat a patient. And if you are going to put their life or safety in danger, they're going to get up and they're going to re leave regardless of what's going on with your family member. And they should be doing that. So if you are a family member or know somebody that has that family member that could act like that, make sure you keep them in check while first responders are on scene. Hey. Drop it! Drop it! Senor! Drop it! So at this point, this, I'm not really going to show the rest of this video. It's not really, if you want to watch the entire video and what happens next, I will put the link to the full unedited uh, video, police cam video down below. Um, but for the purposes of this video, this is pretty much done. I want to say that the Raleigh police, I think, did a really good job, especially when they first got there speaking to him calmly, even though he was yelling and acting irate and punching the car. And the firefighters did a good job. They were aware of what was going on when this guy popped out a knife out of nowhere. They all got out of there, which they should have. Um, but again, this is why it is a monumentally terrible idea to replace police with social workers. In a situation like this, there's absolutely nothing a social worker would have done different. And when this person is getting to this point where they're belligerent, they're being told and they're given commands, they're putting everybody else at risk, whether it be their family members, whether it be the first responders, whether it be people driving by on the side of the road, who knows what he's going to do going out into traffic. Um, this is why it's a terrible idea and why it's important to have police and other first responders all working together as opposed to not using police and using social workers instead. So as always, I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, consider just subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.